Good morning, folks. We've got some solar activity at the Northern Sunspot Group, a couple solid articles from the peer-reviewed journals, one that's not so solid. But let's start with our star and find the last 24 hours on the sun was mostly quiet in terms of eruptions. We are seeing solar wind and geomagnetic conditions in a calm state in this morning. We're starting to get a bit more flare activity in the M-class range, but they are impulsive and not producing significant particle events or CMEs. This active region is beginning to depart the Earth-facing half of the Sun, leaving the trailing group behind, which is still quiet while facing the Earth. Moving on to the articles, we begin with one of the first genuine attempts I've seen to take the widespread information and identification of pre-earthquake electromagnetic signals and put it into a working detection algorithm. We had recently quasi-lamented the lack of real-world application of the vast retrospective correlation analyses, and here we're seeing it trying to be put to work holding out our hope for the future. Up next, we've got a paper on the space weather impact to space assets and satellites, indicating the need for better tracking and prediction of geospace conditions to avoid potentially preventable losses. If the sun kicks into a higher gear, there is no saving many of them. My mind goes back to Sky Terra, which was lost in 2012, during what can't even be considered major space weather. When the sun eventually has another super flare, it's possible all satellites will be lost. Folks, there was a paper last year that purported the possibility that nearly all of modern global warming was caused by the sun. This past week, the claim was attempted to be debunked. The new paper claims they made various errors and that the sun couldn't possibly be responsible for more than 5% of the warming we've seen over the last 200 years. The problem with this new paper is its choice to attack a paper that doesn't even match what should be the modern standard which includes solar particle forcing, cosmic rays, and the weakening of Earth's magnetic field. All the focus is just on solar irradiance. It doesn't account for the solar energetic particle events, which we've seen tied to multi-degree spikes in temperature in the hours to days range, or how the coronal mass ejections driving those particle events is double what they were a century ago. We come back to my claim, which stands firm, our challenge that has not once been met in the scientific literature, and I'll say it again. There is not one single paper in existence which blames human activity for global warming, which looks at the weakening of Earth's magnetic field over the last 150 years, the cosmic rays, and their influence on clouds, and the global electric circuit, or the solar particle forcing which can instantly have those global effects we've been examining. The entire argument in the journals is akin to vigorously debating the particle shape of flour to the tastiness of a cake while ignoring the sugar, chocolate, eggs, milk, and vanilla, which anyone with half a brain can realize is asinine. For more on how the sun truly impacts global weather and climate, check out Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. Link is below in the video description box, 300 pages, 500 citations. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.